In this video, I'm going to be showing you a tucker attachment, which is right here that you can see. This is a vintage attachment, and I'm going to show it to you. Um, I'm going to use it on the 1947 Singer Model 6616. Now this tucker attachment is actually very simple even though it looks complicated. There is an adjustment knob right here, an adjustment knob right here, and it clamps on. It's a side clamper. It will clamp on to the needle bar just like any of the presser feet. Now on this back bar right here, there are markings that are one sixteenth inch apart and depending on how wide you want um, your tuck you would I have it set at one because that's how wide I wanted the tuck the front bar is the space between tucks and the front bar is spaced at one eighth of an inch markings. So you loosen this screw here to slide to adjust the back bar, which is for the tuck, and you loosen this screw here to adjust this, which is for the space in between one tuck and another. Now when you attach this, this bar here is going to be pushed down as you sew. And what that's going to do is compress these. And as you sew one tuck, that bar and those little, they call them blades, will mark your fabric for the next tuck. It probably won't be a very uh, deep impression, but that is why you're adjusting this front bar to get that crease so that your tucks are evenly spaced at whatever spacing you want them to be at. This is one of the um, versions of the Singer Sewing Book. And this is the book from the 70s. I don't know the exact copyright on this one. Um, but this one does have the tucker attachment in it with a description with all the information. This is their suggested settings for tucking. And you'll see there it says tucks and spaces may be equal or the fold of the tuck may touch the previous tuck as in a blind tuck. So when you are talking about how wide you want the tuck, um, for example one quarter of an inch of a tuck with no space between them, you set the back bar at one and the space bar, which is the one in the front, at one. So this chart gives you their suggested settings. And I'll show you the cover of this book, the Singer Sewing Book. This version is from, let's find out because um, my older version from the 50s did not have the tucker in there. 1969. Copyright 1969, The Singer Company. This is a, it's a wonderful book to have anyway. The Singer Sewing Book. It's a wonderful book to have. Um, but they do have the tucker in here with the different information if you're looking for a printed copy of what we're going to do. And again, I've adjusted the back tuck bar. I believe I have it set at one. And the front space bar, it looks like right now I have it at two and a half. I, I think it, it got moved while I was um, moving this around. So I may make that a little narrower, or I'm sure I could just try it the way it is. And I'm going to put it on the machine and line up the fabric and show you how it works. I have the tucker attachment on the machine now 
and you can see that it sits with the majority of it to the right. Another thing I want you to notice is the needle hole in the tucker. And when you're attaching this, you just want to make sure, and you can do this by turning the hand wheel toward you, you want to make sure that your needle goes into that hole without a problem because obviously if the needle hits the metal plate on either side the needle would probably break. So now what I'm going to do is put the fabric into the tucker and this piece right here is the fabric guide and that is what moves when you adjust the tucker for your fabric. Now I have the presser foot up I think I just have to get it under there. Now where I'm placing this is this part that I pointed out that is a blade. You can you can see there's a little thing that sticks up there. So this is going to go like that so that it's got that blade underneath it and then it's going to go under the presser foot area of the tucker. Uh, this part where the needle hole is, I'm calling a presser foot. It's actually all one piece. So now I'm just going to slide that fabric under there. And now you can see how the fabric sits against that guide that sticks up. It is under, <coughs> excuse me, these two bars, but it's above the little part that protrudes from the bottom part of the space bar. The needle lines up and the fabric goes under the, the presser foot area of the tucker. And at this point, because I've already set it to what I want, I should just be able to sew. And this is a scrap piece of muslin that I'm using. I did press it. The directions do say that it helps if you press the edge. I started um, the first edge by pressing it and depending on how noticeable the next the crease is for the next tuck, that would determine whether or not I then took this over to the ironing board and pressed the crease where I'm going to do the next tuck. So this is where the tuck will be sewn, right along here, and the next tuck will be marked by that little piece that protrudes up under these two things. Now I'm using a red thread, a dark red thread, just to show you um, the action and where the actual tuck shows up. I think obviously you would be using a white thread if you were really doing this on a white fabric. And you can see, now I have uh, the space set at two and a half on the space bar and that's a pretty good mark. Um, I don't know if you can see it in that light. It's right here is a, a pretty visible mark when you have the fabric right in front of you. So the next step, so there's your first tuck. The next step is to fold the fabric on that crease line with the tuck that you just stitched to the right. And this is where you would decide, gee, is it worth um, just taking that over to the ironing board and pressing that next tuck. And then you would get it underneath the back area again. A lot of these old attachments have very little clearance under the presser foot area. So sometimes it takes a little wiggling to get it in there. And then uh, once you have it in there, because I didn't get up and press it, 
I want to make sure that I am actually folding the fabric on the crease. This is much easier than I thought it was going to be. When I first looked at it, I didn't know what it meant, so it seemed complicated, and it's not complicated at all. that see and I don't know if you can see that the next one is marked right here in in that light you can see the next one is marked so that shows I had chosen one for the tuck size and that's how small they are and then I would finger press them to the right and now but to make a third one I need to fold on the crease again, moving the two that I've already made to the right, and place this the way I had it before. And again, double checking that I'm folding the fabric and finger creasing it really on the crease that the tucker made. And then you want to make sure you have your presser foot down. As I'm doing this, let me show you from this side. I am making sure the fabric hits up against the fabric guide right there. difficult to do it with one hand. So that'll be the third time. Now I'll take that off. Now I have never used this before, I don't think. And yet, now that I see how it is used, I'm actually thinking, well gee, that would make a nice accent on a lot of things. You know, even if I were, I would press it, but if I were making even a tote bag or something, because then when you did the seams, you would press them all going in the same direction. That's a very easy way to add tucks to fabric. It really is. And that's the Vintage Singer Tucker Attachment.